Good afternoon, straight from my colleague Charlie Wojciechowski upstairs just outside of the courtroom. We have received word that R. Kelly has been found guilty on seven of the 13 counts that he has faced in this trial, not guilty on six of those counts. As for his co-defendant, Darrell McDavid, not guilty on all four counts he faces, and co-defendant Milton Brown, not guilty on the one count that he faces. So a bit of a mixed result for R. Kelly. Again, this trial would have reached its one month point tomorrow. But again, we've received word from the jury upstairs as this is their second day of deliberation now that the two co-defendants not guilty on all of their counts and R. Kelly a mix of guilty and not guilty. Let's go over some of those counts. We don't yet know what the breakout is. We don't yet know which of the counts he has been found guilty and which have been not guilty. We expect those details really any second as they come from the courtroom upstairs. But again, guilty seven, not guilty on six. Here are again some of the details as to what R. Kelly has been facing as Charlie has just come downstairs uh, here next to me. Uh, from the overflow room upstairs with the rest of the press, but a total of 13 counts, five victims testifying today or over the course of the last month. Uh, in this case, largely centered on child pornography charges as well as obstruction of justice charges related to the 2008 trial back here in Chicago. Charlie is joining us now uh, live here on the air, fresh from the floor upstairs. Uh, Charlie, tell us about the breakout and we saw the mixed results for R. Kelly today. It really is a mixed verdict in this case because the judge looked at not only uh, I'm sorry, the jury looked at not only the counts against him, but the ages of the victims. And when you see the not guilty counts that appeared in two of the later counts, the uh, Brittany count and the Nia count, that means they were, had real questions about the age of the victims at the time the alleged abuse occurred. The most important one here, the Jane pseudonym that was used, this is the woman who was alleged to have been the subject of the 2008 video that was shown during the Cook County trial. There was a guilty verdict on that. Now, what was very significant here is both of the other co-defendants, McDavid and Brown, had they walked on this. They are completely not guilty of the uh, allegations against them. Both of them let out a whoop when you heard uh, the verdict read in court. The judge read everything very, very quickly, so it was hard to sort out exactly which counts went to which things. But from our initial reading, uh, he is guilty of child pornography of exploiting the children. The question is distributing that video. I think that the jurors may have had a question about whether he ever intended for this material to be released. Was this private material? And that, I think, made a difference in a few of the counts. That is why they ruled the way they did today. They were in there for about uh, 11 hours total, seven today, four yesterday. So they really did look at the details in this case, and that's, I think, why they came to the mixed verdict they did. Charlie, I think as a lot of people know already, and you have obviously know following this case, R. Kelly has been found guilty and has already been sentenced to 30 years in a case in New York. Can you talk about maybe some of the symbolism on top of the actual accountability that this now leads to since the 2008 trial was right here in Chicago as well? I think it sends a very clear message that uh, he is being held accountable for his actions, especially when it comes to younger victims. But it does create some questions about the whole allegation that the 2008 trial was fixed, that they paid jurors, or excuse me, paid uh, victims off so that they wouldn't testify. That was the allegation with the Jane pseudonym that was involved in this trial. But would that have made a difference? The ruling today from the jury means that they did not think McDaniel had a role, I mean, McDavid had a role in that, or that Brown had a role in that. Those are the people alleged to have made the payoffs to those uh, witnesses. So I think the fact that he's being held accountable is very important. Uh, this comes in the wake of the surviving R. Kelly video series on Lifetime, in which a lot of the alleged victims came forward with their stories. That is very important. R. Kelly is going to be in jail pretty much for the rest of his natural life, given the New York sentence, whatever sentence comes down in this case. And there are more cases pending. There's one in Minnesota. There are also two more cases pending in Cook County. So he still has a lot of legal problems ahead of him. This is just a, a minor victory on what is going to be a very difficult road for Robert Sylvester Kelly. Yeah, 55 years old now is R. Kelly. And just to go over the counts that he did face, it was 13 and all. We know it's hard to keep track of the line by line. As you said, the judge read it very quickly. But here are just the counts that he faced, just to remind everyone of exactly what was at stake here. Five counts 
counts of enticing minors for sex, four counts of producing child pornography, two counts of receiving child pornography, one count of conspiracy to obstruct justice from the 2008 trial, and then one count of conspiracy to receive child pornography. As for the attorneys and the co the other attorneys and the other co-defendants who were with R. Kelly in this case, you documented as you covered this trial how forcefully and how often the attorneys said that maybe my clients may have known something, may have they haven't known something, but they said that the federal government has not proved beyond a reasonable doubt that they knew all of this activity was going on. And the jurors agreed with them. I think especially when it comes to McDavid and Brown, the not guilty verdicts in their case show that the, the conspiracy that surrounded R. Kelly didn't exist to the extent the government wanted to prove it did. Uh, did R. Kelly commit many of these acts? They're on videotape. It's hard to refute the fact that they did. The jurors saw for themselves, and those are where the convictions fell in this case. But the ancillary things, the uh, conspiracy to exploit children, the receive and transmit child pornography, those kind of things are much more difficult to prove, especially when they made such an effort to get back the tapes that were taken from them. So I don't think there was ever an intention here to distribute this material. I know uh, back in 2008, a lot was made of the fact that this uh, tape was sent to Jim DeRogatis and Abdon Polish, who's uh, walked into the uh, courthouse just now. Uh, but I think those were, in the words of the attorneys representing the defendants in this case, those were for revenge, those were for blackmail purposes. It was never the intention of the Kelly camp to let that get out. A lot has also been made as well about the families and the victims of R. Kelly here who are also being put back into the spotlight uh, to retell their stories in hopes of getting justice for all of this, including a mother, I believe, who testified that she was, she said she was threatened or worried about her family's safety because of what R. Kelly or his associates can do. Did you see the jury find those allegations credible leading to where we are today? Unfortunately, the witnesses put themselves in a difficult position because they said one thing in lawsuits they filed against R. Kelly and said another thing on the stand and said different things back in 2008. So I think credibility became a real issue for the jurors in this case, especially when it comes to age. This is a very sensitive age, you know, the 16, 17, 18 age group. What happened when? Um, and, and what was done about it? I think in the Jane case, the allegation was that her entire family was in some way benefiting from its relationship with R. Kelly. She had hoped to become a singer herself. Her father was a very talented musician. Her mother encouraged the relationship between them, although she says she never knew the extent to which that relationship matured. So the pressure came from a number of sources, not only R. Kelly. This man at the time was one of the biggest stars in the world. He really dominated the music industry here in Chicago. He had a, a, a movie theme that uh, was known worldwide. When people wanted to talk about music, they came to R. Kelly and made careers out of that. And I think a lot of these girls came with the same hopes and dreams. Great insight. Thank you so much, Charlie. You've been covering this from day one here at the Dirksen Federal Building. For now, Mary and Stefan, we'll send it back to you as the uh, news has just broke here that we do have those verdicts.